Hello and welcome to another edition of Kiadini's Kitchen, video game recipes made real. This week we are finally tackling a recipe from one of the most consistently popular games of the last decade. We're making mushroom stew from Minecraft. So the chances are, if you're watching this and I really don't need to explain what Minecraft is, the crafty game is still absolutely enormous years after its initial release, and to be honest it's quite surprising we've not already cooked something from it. Mushroom stew specifically, well for one thing somebody requested it in the comments, thank you for doing that by the way, but secondly, to be honest it was the only recipe I was ever going to pick from Minecraft. Mushroom stew has a weird special like personal significance for me which I will explain uh, very shortly, but yeah, basically when it came to picking a recipe from Minecraft, it was the only one I, I really wanted to do. So with that in mind, here is what you'll need to make mushroom stew from Minecraft. A knob of butter, one onion, three cloves of garlic, around 800 grams of mushrooms, I am using a mix of white and chestnut, some smoked paprika, some salt and pepper, some parsley, a dash of white wine, although that's optional, 150 millilitres of vegetable stock, and some single cream. So step one is to finely dice the onions and garlic, and also cut up the mushrooms. So I mentioned I had a bit of a personal connection to, if you can call it that, to, uh, to mushroom stew in Minecraft. I guess you'd call it a fondness, really. Uh, and the reason for that is when I worked at GameSpot back in the day, we started a survival server for our community and all the staff were playing on it. We were really hooked at the time. And lots of the community kind of piled in and we started sort of started carving out this world. Um, and in the middle of it, like my house was, was pretty much banging in the middle of the server, which was nice. And it was kind of an area a lot of people came through because they were sort of, gates to the uh, the nether and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and because it was a survival server, what I did was I would grow and cultivate giant mushrooms and then there were chests next to them. Uh, so it was a brown mushroom and a red mushroom, like a really big one. And there's a chest next to them just full of bowls and full of mushrooms that had already been kind of harvested from these big mushrooms. And it was basically just like a mushroom stew kitchen. So if people were moving through and they wanted to grab something to eat to keep their strength up, then they could. And it was a really small, like really minor thing. But for some reason, like it was my favorite thing about the server was just running this like little mushroom stew outpost in the middle of the server. And um, it just gave me a real fondness for the dish because it was quite hearty, even though you couldn't stack it, which was annoying. But um, yeah, I felt like I was doing my part for the server. And that's why I decided to make it today. Right, so that's all the onion and garlic. And then I'm gonna run out of space on this chopping board very quickly. Taking the mushrooms, um, I'm not gonna slice them quite as finely as I've sort of diced this. What I'm actually just gonna do is one cut there, one cut there, to cut them into kind of quarters because obviously mushrooms, when you cook them, they do reduce in size quite a bit and um, because they are the main ingredient, I don't want them to uh, become too small, I want them still to be kind of chunky. So that's what I'm doing, I'm just going to quarter these mushrooms rather than slicing them. But really, you can cut them out, uh, cut them up however you like. Right, so I actually had to put them back in this bowl because I simply had run out of uh, space on my chopping board. But there it is, there's some diced onion and garlic and there are some quartered mushrooms. So now we're going to get a casserole dish out. We're going to put a knob of butter in there and just start gently sweating the onions and garlic for a few minutes until they go translucent. Butter. Now something to bear in mind when you're cooking onions in this way, it's quite important to keep the flame nice and low and kind of do this slowly and gently because we are using butter, not oil, and butter has a much lower smoking point than say vegetable oil. Um, so you don't want to go too crazy with the heat, otherwise you're going to start making things smoke and burn. So what we can do instead is just stick a lid on, kind of let the onions kettle for a little while and sweat that way. Right, now this is probably going to fog up the camera something fierce. Oh no, we're okay. But, uh, you can see the onions have started to sweat quite nicely now in the pan. 
and crucially they haven't started to brown. So what we're going to do at this point is just we're going to get our mushrooms and tip them all in there, stir them together with the onions and just keep cooking them for a few minutes. All right, so hopefully you can see now the mushrooms have started to cook down quite nicely and already they are reducing in size, which again is why I kept them quartered rather than slicing them. Hello, dog. Anyway, um, so at this stage we need to add in a few more ingredients. If you'll just let me move the camera. We are going to add in a dash of white wine. Not too much, just the end of a bottle, really. Um, then we need a good pinch of salt. Some pepper. Quite a big twist, really. And then one of my favorite ingredients in the entire world, smoked paprika. I'm going to give this a really good shake to really get that flavour in. There we go, that's loads. And with that, we're just going to start stirring all these ingredients together and we're going to continue to cook them for another minute or two. So while that's just simmering away, I just want to say a quick thing about parsley. Now, I did mention at the top of this episode that parsley is one of the ingredients in this mushroom stew, and uh, that's very, very true. And obviously, parsley being a nice herb, you should try and use the freshest stuff possible. Now, I just checked on my parsley plant, which I haven't done for a while, because, you know, how routinely does anyone check on a parsley plant? And, uh, oh, it, it is dead. It has... It has upped and died. So I am going to use some of this. I'm going to cut this up nice and finely. Uh, but obviously, needless to say, that, that is some sub substandard parsley. So um, you use the fresh stuff. I'll soldier on with this stuff. And um, yours will probably turn out better than mine. All right, so it's been another couple of minutes. And as you can see, we are really motoring now. So we are ready for the next set of ingredients, including the aforementioned sad parsley, 150 millilitres of vegetable stock, and then a good drizzle of single cream, which I just realised I've left in the fridge. Bear with me. Right, yes, so, single cream. Uh, gonna give it a decent drizzle. So we're just gonna do this by eye. How much is that? If the whole thing's 284 millilitres, that was maybe 50 ml, 50 ml of, of, of single cream there. Let's add a tiny bit more. We'll call that 50 to 70 millilitres of single cream. And you can see there as I've stirred it in already, it's starting to look like a really creamy sauce. And all we need to do now is reduce that down. So we're going to keep a nice medium heat under this and just keep an eye on it, stir it every now and then and reduce it down, and then that's pretty much it. So, in the meantime, you know, do keep an eye on this, but uh, if you've got any mining to do, or indeed crafting, now would be the time. Right, so, it's been a little while, I'm about to take this off the heat, but I just wanted to show you that, to me, is about the desired consistency. It's just about thick enough it's kind of just on the cusp between a stew and a sauce and to be honest it smells pretty good because mushrooms are delicious as is smoked paprika but of course smell is only one half of the battle what does it taste like let us find out Alright then, so mushroom stew from Minecraft. Let's see what it tastes like. Yeah, I'm a big fan of that. It's um mm, it's creamy. Like it's creamy but it's not like overpowering, like it's not claggy, it doesn't feel too rich. 
it's just on the right side. I think the stock kind of keeps the balance a little bit. Um, and then you've, mm, yum, 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 yum. and you've got that really nice flavor of mushroom just kind of coming in and working with the paprika. It's like, oh, it's a really nice balance between like creamy and kind of like sharp or kind of clean taste. Um, that, yeah, is really quite tasty. If I had to do it again, what would I do different? Um, you know what, I'm kind of on the fence about how I cut the mushrooms because like, quartered, they're quite big in your mouth, but then like, because they're mushrooms and you know, because the way you've cooked them, they don't have like a big bite. So like, maybe actually slicing them would have been better. I don't know. Maybe I'll try this again sometime and see. But uh, in the meantime, like, no, it's tasty. If I found that in a crate, um, in the wilderness while I was trying to survive and avoid being blown up by things while mining enough materials to build a little house and keep myself safe at night, I'd be delighted. And ultimately, that is the highest accolade any mushroom dish can be afforded, I think. So anyway, thank you very much for joining me for another edition of Chiodini's Kitchen. Please do keep those recipe suggestions coming in because they're really helpful and, well, to be honest, I'd completely forgotten about my little mushroom stew farm. So it was nice to kind of revisit that memory and then turn it into something a bit more productive, like an actual meal. So yeah, um, that was nice. Um, thanks very much. We'll, we'll do this again sometime. Next week, probably. In fact, there's a very special episode of Chiodini's Kitchen coming up. It'll either be the next one or the one after that. Don't miss it, because I've been trying to make this happen for a long time, and it's finally come off, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. But anyway, I'm going to stop tantalising you now. There are plenty other videos you could watch while you're waiting for the next episode. Um, some of them should be on screen now. Please do like and subscribe because it really does help us out. Thank you very much for watching, and as ever, have a lovely day. Thank you.